You won't believe what caught my attention while playing Hogwarts Legacy. This spectacular unfolding of the game map. It just felt so magical and I wanted to recreate it so badly, but there was a problem. I had no 3D model of the map and using a different castle just wouldn't feel right. This means that to pull off this effect, I first need to create a full 3D model of the map. And let me tell you, this is not a small challenge for me. You see, I love coding and writing shaders, but when it comes to 3D modeling and texture mapping, well, I suck. So I decided to quit. But the next day, I came back with a wild idea. What if I built the entire Hogwarts castle from scratch using only procedural geometry? No pre-made models, no manual UV unwrapping, just pure math and code. But is this even possible or am I about to fail spectacularly? Well, there's only one way to find out. I started with the analysis of the map and after a while I noticed something. The complex structures are actually just a combination of simple cubes and cylinders. So, in theory, if I create a procedural cube and a procedural cylinder, I should be able to recreate the whole castle. This seemed like a good starting point, so I jumped into Unity and started with the first procedural shape, a cuboid. Now, you probably don't know what is required to create procedural geometry. Oh, you do? Well, I'm going to explain it anyway. Let's say you want to create a cube. At the bare minimum, you need to determine the position of its corner vertices and specify how they're connected into triangles. After doing exactly that, I ended up with this. Wait, wait, not this. This was a failure. I ended up with this. Okay, okay, I know, it's just a cube, but it's completely procedural. By adding control points, I can update the mesh in real time. But most importantly, I can use it as a building block for more complex shapes like this wall segment. However, I need to have some sort of a ground for placing wall segments. Currently, I'm in an empty void. So I started creating an environment. I decided to use Unity's terrain system since it allows me to get results quickly. After first sculpting the general shape of the terrain, I started smoothing it and adjusting it to match the reference better. Then I painted some grass and hills textures to give it a bit of color. I know I will have to adjust it along the way, but this looks okayish for now. With the base of the terrain completed, I could finally place the castle's walls. For this, I created an editor tool that will allow me to specify a set of points on the terrain and automatically create wall segments between them. Also, I can further modify each point to adjust its position and the neighboring wall segments will be adjusted in real time. Awesome. This is starting to look really good, but the original castle had defensive towers placed between the walls. They're a combination of cylindrical shapes with cubes on top. For that, I've created a new procedural cylindrical shape that will be controlled with only two control points. I can adjust its size, shape and resolution. Also, I've created a variant that is hollow in the middle. Now, I can use these shapes and combine them with the cuboid shape to create a defensive tower. Look how quickly I can tweak the look of the tower by just updating its properties. So nice. I've placed the towers between walls and things were starting to look promising. Well, at least until I tried to create this bell tower. I mean, what is this? The first and obvious thing I'm missing is the roof. I created the roof texture in Photoshop and tried to place the roof manually by adjusting meshes to fit the underlying shape. However, this took way too long and by looking at the sheer number of roofs I would have to create, manual placement was out of the question. Did somebody say tool? This one adjusts two roof pieces perfectly to the underlying shape and if there is a space between the pieces, it adds an additional third piece that perfectly connects them. Now whenever I update the underlying shape, the roof updates as well. With the roof out of the way, I switched my focus to the windows. If you look closely, you can see that every window is basically a rectangle with an additional top segment. This segment is a semicircle with a variable number of points. Also, the window plane is surrounded by a frame that goes around the whole shape. And that's exactly how I created this procedural window shape. I can control the width and height of the window and the top segment. Also, I can control the width and depth of the frame so that the window could fit nicely on the castle. Finally, I've created a simple shader that draws vertical and horizontal bars across the window based on its size. 
Additionally, it can change color from light blue to glowing orange to simulate the light being turned on or off in the room. With the window shader complete, I've placed the roof and the windows on the tower. And there we go, this looks so much better than before. It seemed like I had everything I needed to complete the surrounding buildings of the bell tower wing. However, while creating them, I noticed I was spending a lot of time manually adjusting the procedural shapes. You know what could be a really good solution for that? This tool makes object placement extremely easy. It supports the placement of objects along a line, circle or rectangle. This is really useful when placing windows on towers and buildings. Also, it really helped with the creation of repeating patterns like columns on this bridge. Armed with these powerful tools, I started creating the castle piece by piece. Maestro! few days to complete even with the power of procedural shape creation and custom tools. This makes me appreciate more the amount of work that artists put into creating this manually. And if you appreciate the work we're doing and you want to support us, you can do so on our Patreon account. There we offer early access to new videos and provide source code of our projects. Speaking of projects, let's get back to this one. We're not done yet. You may have noticed those big circular windows on top of the astronomy tower and south wing. My procedural window shape doesn't support this, so I had to be a bit creative. I used the procedural cylinder shape and applied this gluing material to it. Then I positioned some cubes over it to resemble the original shape. Not bad, right? I have to admit I wanted to add more details and further polish some areas, but then I realized the original model is also filled with flaws. I mean, <laughs> just look at this. Roof going through the middle of the building the window being cut in half by the wall of the building next to it, and this bridge is not even connected to the astronomy wing. Since I haven't even noticed this while playing the game, I guess they don't matter as much as I thought. However, what I would notice is the Hogwarts castle without the Quidditch pitch. For this, I've created two new procedural shapes. The first is the procedural tower, which consists of multiple control points that can only be offset vertically. Each point controls the width of the tower at that height. The second is the procedural stand shape, which is much simpler and consists of only three control points. I know that I'm not going to reuse these shapes anywhere else, but I wanted to keep with the procedural generation theme. To form the shape of the pitch, I've expanded the shape placement tool with an additional option, placement in the shape of an ellipse. Finally, I hand painted the white lines on the terrain beneath the pitch. And this is how the Quidditch pitch turned out. I have to say, this may be my favorite part of the whole castle. With the castle somewhat complete, I decided to focus on the rivers and the lake. I've reused the logic from the wall placement tool to create a tool for creating rivers across the terrain. By adding points over the terrain, I can construct the shape and size of the rivers. For the lake, I've just added a simple plane and stretched it across the area of the lake. 
To complete the look of the water, I've created a planar shader that applies the water texture and slightly animates it over time. It's far away from perfect, but it provides a nice general feel. And here's the current state of the castle. The water really added that missing piece of the puzzle. But speaking of missing pieces, I can't complete this project without trees. Luckily, they're all looking quite simple. To implement them, I created two new procedural shapes. First, I extended the procedural cylinder shape to support multiple control points so that I could create more interesting shapes for the trunk of the tree. The treetop, however, proved to be a bit more challenging. In its core, it's basically the same cylindrical shape, but it needs to support the splitting of the bottom vertices. For this, I've created additional control points that allow me to adjust the position of individual vertices. Additionally, I can click on these small green spheres to split the underlying vertex into two separate vertices. After splitting the vertices, the spheres turn red, indicating that I can't split them further. Using these two procedural shapes, I've created four unique trees. I modeled them based on different trees I could spot in the game. I added a bit of color variation to each tree to give the forest a greater sense of diversity and richness. At this point, I'm ready to start placing them across the map, but there's a lot of trees. I'm wondering, what could ease their placement? Well, I made this thing that shall remain nameless, that checks for the possible tree positions inside this red circle and spawns new tree instances in areas with available space. Each spawn tree has a slight variation in its size to add even more variety. This makes adding or removing trees so much easier. After placing trees across the map, I used the tree to procedural shape to add a bit of greenery to the top of the greenhouse in the library annex. And with that, the map is complete. I'm quite happy with the final result. I've truly put my artistic skills to the test. Let me know in the comments what I can improve to get an even better result. Finally, I have everything I need to start working on the map opening effect. If you want to see how that will turn out, make sure to smash that subscribe button. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one.